Aloha! Time for the morning, friends and family. On this channel, we upload one beautifully cinematic mas one beautifully edited cinematic masterpiece a week. This video is uncut. In today's uncut video, first I want to apologize. My neighbor is going crazy with a jackhammer. Like, not just regular jackhammer, but like a big tractor jackhammer, like tearing up all of that stuff up there. So, and there's these kids going crazy inside the house. And we're doing an unboxing. I'm going to talk about quarantining. It would not make any sense to do the unboxing in the snake room because we're, doing un we're going to quarantine the snake. So, bringing there makes no sense. I'm going to show you my quarantine setup. We're obviously going to take a look at the snake that is here. And uh, that'll be about it. Sound good? Look at my table. Before we dive too deeply into the video, I would like to thank all of you who got snakes for me this past weekend. While I was in the St. Louis show, I uploaded that video that showed the different snakes that were going to be available that I was going to put on Morph Mugger for the first time ever. And we put them up, and I shipped out snakes today. I'm shipping out snakes tomorrow. I'm shipping out snakes next week. Thank you for making my reintroduction of snakes back to Morph Market after a long hiatus of not having any snakes on Morph Market whatsoever a success. That was awesome. It was really cool. And just because I don't know how to run Morph Market properly, <laughs> uh, that doesn't change the fact that that sale. I, so I said I mentioned on last Saturday that the sale was going to go for a week, 50% off everything I listed. And just when I put the sale prices into Morph Market, apparently it ended today. For you watching, that's yesterday. And that wasn't the intent. I wanted for it to go all the way to Saturday. But also the intent was really for it to just be for folks that were watching these videos and are subscribed to the channel. So right now on Morph Market, everything's listed at full price. However, for you watching this video until this Saturday, you still get the 50% off. So keep that in mind when you're looking. Also, I didn't load up all the animals that I had planned to because I just didn't have time before I left for St. Louis. Um, so let's talk about this snake. There's, my point is there's, there's going to be more snakes going up. Um, by the time you see this video, if you if you looked at the snakes that were there, what, after you watched the last, past weekend's video, there's going to be more snakes there versus less. <laughs> so, Redline and NARBC partnered up with a company called Palm Street to do a live auction at the NARBC show in St. Louis this past weekend. That's why I went out there to help with the video production of it, and. Um, there was, it was pretty cool. Actually, there was a bunch of vendors, like 20 different vendors over the weekend came over for two hours a day um, between the hours of noon and two, and we just did a live auction. All the vendors brought different stuff, and I thought it was really cool. It was fun to be behind the camera and, like, behind the scenes watching that happen. My dog is going crazy. Hello! Come here, bud. Um. <laughs> yeah, so it was fun, and one of the animals was going, Bob Vu, had a few animals up there, including the one that's in this box. And I was sitting there. I couldn't bid because I was running the camera, but I looked over at Robin. I was like, dude, the price this animal's at right now, I gave Robin, like, my max price. I was like, this is, this is what I'm willing to, like, bid up to to get this animal. So please just, like, keep bidding because I thought the bidding was going to stop at a ridiculously low price for this animal. And I was like, it didn't. But it's still, I was just like, I, I have always wanted an animal from Bob because he's a reputable guy. And the more I get to know him, the more I like him. So I'm pretty stoked to have a Bob Boo animal now as well as uh, be able to take part in that thing that happened this weekend and have Redline ship me my box, of course. I didn't have to do anything, just, you know. It's, I rarely, rarely get new animals here, as you, as you know, and I even more rarely pick them up at the show. So, especially if I've flown to a show, I just don't like to ship, but, you know, Redline makes it super easy. So, it was, I was kind of like, that was part of my decision. I was like, ah, Redline's here. I'll ship my box super easily, and... That's what happened. Here it is. It arrived today. And doo -doo -doo -doo. got a little heat pack on there. Got a little chill, chill, chill out there. Okay, before I actually I take out the snake, I should probably talk about the quarantine thing because once I get the snake out, I'm not going to be able to focus because my dog is going to try and eat the snake or something like that. Hilo, what are you doing? Hmm. I'm a happy dog. Okay, so this is something I haven't used in a long time. It's a simple setup. If, if you're like me and you really don't get snakes, new snakes that often, then there was a time when I had a whole rack system set up in my kid's bedroom um, as a quarantine spot. But I, again, like this would be the probably the only snake I get this season. I got one snake last season, so I don't really need a whole setup for quarantine up there anymore. So that's where this comes into play. And I haven't talked about this a long time, so I figured I'd do an update. 
It's simple. It's just like a 28 quart tub or whatever size from Walmart. You know, any any tub will do. The fact that it's plastic is a big deal. I've got glass tanks that I could use. I don't think that's good personally. I mean, the screen top glass tank for ball pythons just I just don't think that works very well um, because it lets out too much humidity. And then my house does not stay as warm as the snake room, so this plastic helps keep the ambient temperature up in the tub. I've got a uh, just a little heat pad on the bottom, Zoomed. The one thing about these stickable uh, heat pads is that they don't really stick to plastic very well, so you end up having to throw some um, high-density packing tape on there, and then, of course, a little probe for the thermostat, and it's just one of those jump start like uh, thermostats, you know, cheap and easy. I do have some Freedom Breeder thermostats I could throw in there, but this thing was already attached, so just go for it. This is something that's fun that I came across. Well, oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> There's nowhere on the property to escape it. Like I said, the house is, is a mess, or the house, not a mess, but the house is loud too. Oh, it's so nice when it stops. Um, this, I came across, this is actually the very first uh, egg and shed from the very first snake that we ever produced here back in 2015. That's Mr. Pink, the one snake to survive the clutch. Our, um, and she lesser poshet sunset boy. Now, this is uh, his egg and his shed. I'm really not super sentimental about stuff, but apparently I'm sentimental enough to keep the first egg and first shed from the first snake we ever hatched out in our breeding expedition. And I'll make sure to hold on to that because why not? That's a pretty cool thing to have, I think. Anyway, that's the setup. Super simple, super easy. I'll throw some cocoa blocks in there. Cocoa blocks. And uh, a little this little hide as well from Reptile Basics and just like makes it nice and easy to maintain a snake for a few months and my quarantine process for those that forgot because I haven't said it in forever is three months or three sheds whichever what comes last and the reason is because you never know what's going to happen with a snake a snake could be carrying something that might not present itself until the stress of traveling comes into play so I trust Bob and I think Bob probably has great customer service and animals and stuff that I don't care who produces the animal I don't care how tidy their own uh, security is the security when it comes to uh, biosecurity. I don't care. I don't care who the animal comes from. It did, literally doesn't matter. It could come from my best friend who I have known has never had a snake animal in their life. The the traveling process, the shipping of the snake can, again, the stresses from that can cause something that's been lying dormant to manifest. So the reason I give it that much time is to allow that to manifest if it's going to, you know, three months or three sheds, at whichever one comes last. That should be enough time for whatever, if anything's gonna manifest because of shipping or everything's gonna manifest in the snake, any kind of thing is going to present itself or, uh, you know, if it's gonna, I don't know, I'm not thinking of the right word. Ooh, that's nice and toasty. That should be enough time to find out if it's gonna get sick or not. Um, so, and then after then, you can bring them into your population. And if you have any more than one or two animals, it's just not worth it to potentially lose i mean like i said like i said some people might think oh yeah i know this person that you know i know they got a clean facility that doesn't matter it shouldn't matter when you're getting a new animal my opinion obviously all right let's check this thing out <laughs> you guys waited long enough oh yes oh yes oh yes indeed oh and i think they just turned off the jackhammer too that's great okay so this here is a snake a ball python <laughs> uh, let's turn around this way we got some some light on that sucker oh look at that nice light from the sunshine oh my goodness okay so what this is is a ghi spot nose yellow belly fire clown male excuse me i'm burping up food over here <clears throat> GHI spot nose fire yellow belly clown and I just thought it was a beautiful animal um, obviously that's why I got it also you know the funny thing is I've got a ton of these genes already I, I have these genes already I have GHI in clown I have spot nose in clown I have yellow belly in clown I have fire in clown um, so it, it wasn't like I needed any of these genes because I have them already worked into clown but I just thought that doesn't matter. That didn't obviously didn't matter to me. I just wanted an animal for Bob. And there's a reason I have all those genes because I really like them in clown. So I figured that why not have a backup male for, you know, next breeding season. And then just particular combo, I just thought it looked really good um, as well. So I was like, why not? 
Let's get it. And he can indeed come in handy next season. I'm trying to find the sunlight. Where did it go? I lost it. Uh, sunlight. There it is. There we go. Let some light shine on that guy. Yeah, it's a good looking snake, I think. Pretty happy. Pretty stoked. Uh, stoked to finally have a Bob Vu animal. So, gosh, I wish that there wasn't jackhammering happening right now. It is what it is. You know, I got a busy day. I got things to do. I can't wait for them to stop. So, thank you guys for watching. Um, please go follow, check out our Morph Market and take advantage of those deals that are still going all the way till the end of the weekend. For those of you, basically, up until the moment I upload my video from St. Louis this Saturday, that sale is still running. Even though it doesn't say it on Morph Market, it's still running for you watching the channel. So, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. We'll see you on the next video. Aloha.